Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as as the Bard of Philbar. Welcome to session Fartook-53. Previously on the Bard's podcast, our heroes recovered from the deadly encounter with Cornwall, leader of the Green Sash Gang. They discovered the old farmhouse was being used as a storage depot for the nefarious group. After gathering their horses, the bodies of the dead guardsmen, and Cornwall, as well as gathering some valuables, the sun was ready to set and Benson the guard felt that it was unwise to travel the frontier at night. The group fortified the old farmhouse and spent the evening resting. We rejoined them at dawn as they prepared to set off. I can't believe there is nothing to eat, grumbled Bulger the sailor. His complaints were answered by Cabe who pointed out that they didn't think the venture through and may have been fortunate considering that they were somewhat unprepared. The gnome grunted and mounted his short pony as his stomach growled loudly. The group headed back the way they came and were quiet for the first half hour of their journey. Each was hungry and thirsty, but none aside from Bolger wanted to admit it. Lady Arena had noticed a grove of apple trees as they were headed to the farmhouse initially and spotted them again as they passed the trees. The group gathered a few of the bountiful fruit before heading back onto the trail. Cabe queried the group with, Did anyone else hear a strange squawking last night? The group murmured, confirming that they too had heard the noise, but they were unfamiliar with it. As if on cue, a loud squawking rose up from a small veil below the trail. Peering down into the morning light, the group observed an immense creature waddling across the lower landscape by a creek. What in the name of the gods is that? yelled out Benson. The others vied for a better look, with Cabe and Lady Irena explaining the image. Their superior elven sight allowed them to make out greater details than the others. It's large, said the bard. Almost eight feet tall, I'd guess, like a bear. Lady Arena quipped that it was covered with feathers and had a large beak and the face of an owl. The two looked at each other, then to Fargus, who appeared alarmed. An owl bear! he exclaimed. The others looked on in ignorance of not being familiar with the creature. Between the three, they described the creature as a magical malfunction of some bad wizard mage work. The backfire of spell energy created a mixture of a bear and an owl with all of the meanest features. Fargus yanked the reins of his mount to move it forward away from the owlbear's direction. They are quite deadly and sometimes run in packs, he stated. It is best if we avoid it considering what we are carrying. The others sensed the concern in their companion and quickly spurred their mounts forward in an attempt to avoid the nasty creature. The early morning jaunt allowed them to see a variety of other creatures taking morning water along the busy creek, including another herd of bison. The group marveled at the beauty of the frontier but kept a quick and pace in order to get into town. Bulger remarked frequently about the beauty of the landscape and seemed impressed at the variety of flora and fauna along the way. Several hours later, the group spied Colby and galloped forward with two bodies lashed to the spare mounts. As they entered, they were met by another guard retinue who had been preparing to find them. The relief unit was happy to see that Benson and the others had returned safely and happy that their lost colleague had been recovered as well. Magistrate Mellon was hailed and joined the party in the town square as the citizens began to gather. A short speech on the bravery of Benson and the adventurers was given to the group. Although the adventurers were appreciative of their remarks, they were also sad for Karina, who was clearly having a difficult time with the issue. At one point, she cheered up as a small child, who was the first to pet peepers, arrived with the bird in tow. He led the creature up to the party, along with the innkeeper of the Comstock Inn. Apparently, peepers had taken offense to being left alone for so long, and had caused a considerable ruckus, along with some minor feces damage child offered to handle the axe beak while the party was gone, which seemed to agree with Peepers. Upon seeing Karina, the bird moved rapidly towards her, causing her mount to become skittish and lurch. The waif quickly jumped off the frightened beast and hugged the axe beak, who cooed loudly in approval. 
The mounts were turned over to the watch who escorted the bodies off and took the animals to the stables. Magistrate Mellon requested his guards approach with a container the PCs observed when they had first made town. Horatio again gave kudos to the group for ridding the area of the hardened criminal responsible for Edmund Tolley's death. The comment stung Karina who bristled with fresh memory. The magistrate announced that Benson would be elevated to the status of captain of the watch for his bravery and for the capture of Cornwall. While the group cheered the man, he sheepishly looked at the party who added their own clapping causing the man to be confused. Horatio continued and held aloft a container of coins and presented it to Fargus who reached out to accept it on the group's behalf. As he took it, he realized there was a sizable amount of coins within. He smiled and hoisted it above his head to the crowd who roared in approval, including a leith barmaid named Winnie who smiled and waved to the large ranger. <clears throat> Fargus passed off the coins to Lady Irena, who nodded to the cheering throng before handing off the heavy item to Bulger. The magistrate asked for a moment of silence for the two members of the guard who had perished before releasing everyone. Fargus advised that he had business to take care of and leapt off the stage, headed for the slender woman. Benson turned to the group and apologized. Stunned, Sister Elaine inquired as to why he was upset. The guard pointed out that aside from getting caught in a trap, he had done very little to do with the capture of Cornwall. The adventurers nodded and then Cabe explained. Look, you weren't the only one to get caught in the trap. Or, looking at Arena, pinned to a tree. You didn't thrust a sword through the bandit's neck or stab him with a crossbow bolt. Perhaps if you had and been treed, you would have. We will never know. The point is, you were brave enough to go ahead and try and stop him. Sister Elaine spoke up next. Bravery isn't something that you get because you did something. Bravery is trying to do the right thing even if it means you may get hurt or die. As you did as much as the rest of us, and without you, we wouldn't have found the farmhouse. Go. Enjoy your position. Be the best captain you can be. Everything else will work out in the end. Benson smiled and thanked the party for their help, but was quickly grabbed by other guards and dunked in a nearby trough. His fellow guardsmen gave a coarse chant that was apparently a long-held ritual by the men. Benson stood up soaking wet and gave a round of hearty handshakes to the men. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.